two gobbles are online. And I think we can we can we can start and then yeah, easy to re easy to remember the names. Yes, easy to remember the names. That's right. Yeah. So Gabor and Gabor Gabor, 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 yeah. Gabor is online. So <laughs> welcome everybody for today's special Facebook live event with Gabor Harshani and Gabor Martin. I went to, I, I invited Gabor. He's one of my mentors and also one of my good friends. And I wanted to interview him on peak performance. Um, he, he is a um, awakening coach. He will share a bit about what he's doing exactly. Um, but what is very important to know about him is that he basically, when he was 18, he went to Canada from Hungary and then he built up a very successful business. He was very successful in real estate investing, investing in, in the seventies and eighties. And then he had a big shift in his life and he turned um, to something else and he learned a lot about life throughout these experiences. And now he's helping people to be more aligned with themselves, going more inside the body and having a much more stronger connection to life, to business and to themselves as well. So I pass the word to Gabor. <laughs> So to share something, if I if we'd like to add something, yeah, yeah, great, uh, great uh, description, Gabor. Uh, all my uh, uh, all the all the realizations that I've had, which Gabor pointed out uh, inside the body or going into the body, really, is uh, not so mystical. They all relate to a uh, an inherited human potential that we all have that not knowing about that would make a major difference in our peak performance in our happy on the happiness of everyday life so although my so-called realization could be interpreted as spiritual but really uh, it's a non-mystical realization that uh, each person has a part of us that uh, now needs to be activated if not then life becomes a lot harder and business performance uh, seem to would, would be a lot harder uh, things as, uh, as as time goes on certain things uh, are easier to get into business the internet stuff like that right but on the other hand certain things are harder than when i was your age we didn't have as much competition or as much complexity so I feel that it is essential to rely on something else now that um, that was not so essential in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. And uh, my question to you is, um, how would you describe um, this kind of going inside in, into your body and activation? Well, it's... Uh, <clears throat> It is basically the most difficult thing to describe. Uh, That's why I'm asking. You. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's much easier if uh, the audience is willing just to to do a little bit of a experiment. Yes, let us do that. And which can just do it instead of explain it. And uh, it, it's it, it's first of all, it's not serious. It's the most serious thing in the world. That's absolutely essential, but. So the good news is that we can only reach it if we're not serious. So the first thing we do is chuckle. We just <laughs> chuckle. This is the way we say hello is to chuckle. And it's okay to chuckle even though we are happy or unhappy. It doesn't matter. The chuckling kind of opens up the lane to get inside the body with our attention. So please chuckle. <laughs> Don't worry about looking crazy. We are looking crazy here, already. So yeah, we, we look crazy for <laughs> you. And you chuckle, just uh, uh, smile, smile at your hands. And uh, although you're looking at the camera or the picture, right? Uh, take a moment and take your attention into your hands and feel the vitality in your hands. And then smile into your hands. So I'm, I don't need to look at my hand to know that it's there. <laughs> so I chuckle and smile into my hand. And then I can chuckle and smile 
uh, into my butt feeling the chair. <laughs> Uh, especially the butt is especially grateful because it I don't think it gets it gets too many smiles so feel the chair as you're sitting uh, feel your butt as you're sitting on the chair and smile at it and uh, what you're gonna find is that uh, this extremely simple exercise uh, is Great, greatly, greatly underestimated by the normal programmed mind. It uh, has unlimited advantages, peace. The normal programmed mind that we operate our life from cannot value this. Just uh, smile at your hand. And if you're if your mind tries to say, oh, this is crazy, this doesn't make sense, just chuckle. Oh, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> of course it doesn't make sense because we are entering into the world of nonsense. This is nonsense. I think it's very, very important that what I learned also from, from Gabor is like, it's like a body consciousness when you are putting your attention into your body. It also helps us to relax and not just, you know, all the time just, you know, having lots of thoughts running in our heads. Because as a peak performer or as an entrepreneur or as a businessman, uh, we have we have lots of thoughts each day. We have lots of new ideas coming. We have lots of um, thoughts that we would like to create, but we have also lots of stressful thoughts, stressful, or we can even feel overwhelmed in many situations because we have lots of things to do. And I find it as an entrepreneur and also as a coach very useful to before any session or before any business meeting, I'm just going into my body with the exercises that Gabor shared, like this chuckle, just, you know, just smiling on my, on my hands and just starting to feel my hands and feeling my body. And it helps really to just be more focused, more aligned with the other persons. It's much more easier actually to connect with the other people as well. It really helps to just being, you know, um, more, you know, alive as well, because we are not, we are slowing our, basically our minds down a bit and just, you know, just enjoying the moment more. So I would like to, you know, propose something is just, now just let's be a bit in, in silence in a way that all of the audience can be also experience this mm -hmm. calmness. Yeah. In order to be silent, uh, in order to have the inner silence, we do not need outer silence. So uh, the inner silence is not conditional on anything. So outside, if you have an outside uh, bird whistling, that's great. If you have a sledgehammer working, that's great. It doesn't really matter for for our uh, in, for our inner peace or inner silence. So. Um, this this subject is greatly mis misunderstood. It's not mysterious, and it's a lot simpler than than people think. And to access it is a lot simpler. Smile at your hand. <laughs> it's a lot simpler. And the benefits are so huge that the program mind that we normally work with cannot possibly evaluate it in any way whatsoever. That does not mean that it's not valuable. Matter of fact, it is so valuable that it's way beyond its uh, measuring, way beyond its probabilities of measurement. You know? And uh, it's, it's essential to be able to be in touch with this um, intelligence. We're not trying to slow our mind down what we're attempting to do is get in touch with the intelligence that runs the body. That's very different than slowing down the mind. Now, when we get in touch with this uh, intelligence that runs the body, the mind will slow down. If we attempt to slow the mind down directly, it's a hard thing to do and chances are it's not going to work permanently. So. We're looking for the mind to slow down in an indirect way. First, touch 
your intelligence surrounds your body, which is not very high, so it's easy to do. And then the mind will slow down. It gives us a template, not a template, it gives us a standard for a, for a very high performance. So basically what this um, kind of, I mean, we don't call it a technique, it's more, more like a being. And, yeah. Let's mm -hmm. call it yeah. Like, a, like a being. It's like uh, really helping to be on a much more um, kind of high performing place and, and not just, you know, running you know, by our, our minds and by our stressful thoughts. And I am, I'm asking you, Gabor, um, what is the biggest obstacle that you believe blocking the performance of entrepreneur, business people, or, 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 or people in general? Okay. Well, uh, luckily I have plenty of experience in uh, very high success and very high failure. So I, I, I'm experienced how to do both. <laughs> <laughs> and you know the difference. <laughs> I, and I know the difference. Uh, uh, you know, I, I wish I had known what I know now, but of course that's a stupid thing to say. <laughs> okay, so uh, in, in, in my opinion, the biggest obstacle or the biggest block that entrepreneurs experience today is the incorrect, incorrect application of critical thinking. Okay. So uh, uh, some people are programmed in such a way that their mind can't slow down or stop. And then whatever idea, whatever wonderful thing is in an idea stage, they right away apply critical thinking, thereby killing it, like bang, 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 kill it before it starts. So it's, can you make an example on that? So sure, uh, an early application of critical thinking would be is okay. You, you and me, we want to open a hot dog stand. <laughs> okay, hot dog stand. let's go. Let's do the hot dog stand tomorrow. But but not any kind of hot dog stand. It's something that people can pre-order on uh, online. Okay, using Facebook. Okay, and can and it's a designer hot dog stand. Okay, and it's color coordinated. Perfect. <laughs> So let's say we start talking about this wonderful hot dog stand and Gabor comes up with, oh yeah, let's, let's, be, let's have an idea of being able to order custom made hot dogs. Oh, okay, let's get, uh, let's, get, let's get into different shapes. It could be like the moon, it could be like the sun and on and on and on. I, I would right away interrupt. No, 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 that, that would not work. That would not work. Plus, uh, you know, the, we, we got to get bank financing. There's no way the bank would finance a hot dog stand where you have moon-shaped hot dogs. <laughs> so that's a very typical uh, uh, early application of critical thinking. And uh, that kind of thinking is, is not really thinking. It's, uh, it's the programmed mind kicks in and start taking over your attention. So it's the, basically these kind of um, beliefs, um, limitations and kind of thoughts are coming in which already basically killing some kind yeah. of creative idea basically it, it blocks the idea blocks any kind of idea or right away i have a feeling oh my god i couldn't be i couldn't possibly be successful i don't have the education or or i i i, I don't have enough money and i have to ask my wife uh, uh, what if I fail? My, 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 my family will not like me anymore. So all those thoughts can come in. They are programmed thought, thoughts from a slavery-oriented society. Uh, we basically live in a programmed institutional slavery. And uh, institutional slavery means that they are fully approved of any kind of limited thoughts that we have. So they can basically manipulate us or lead us by our nose as to whichever way they want. So the early application of um, critical thinking is one of the problems. Uh, the other problem is the other end. Uh, absolutely not applying critical thinking. <laughs> so a typical example, uh, a couple get together and say, ah, oh, we should open a business. Oh, okay, what business? Well, my wife cooks really well. I like it, so people must like it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's open a restaurant. Okay, good. See, we already graduated from hot dog stand to restaurant. Okay. 
Oh, well, okay, I'm going to look for something. And what kind of food? Well, my wife can only cook Hungarian food. Let's do that. Right? And the chances of chances of that kind of the chances of success not applying critical thinking in time. Mm. <laughs> the chance of success is very low. And the biggest problem ca that can happen if you accidentally become successful, mm. if you happen to open uh, the right food and the right uh, market uh, and, and, uh, and you do the right sales and the right everything, everything is accidentally good. And then you think that you did well. That's the worst thing can happen because then, then you start opening a next location. <laughs> So, uh, in my opinion, the um, the biggest, 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 grandest obstacle to to success is the inappropriate application of critical thinking. We need critical thinking, but it has to be a delicate balance between creative mm -hmm. and critical. Mm -hmm. And how can we optimize this uh, critical thinking? Like how we know that we are the kind of in the middle in terms of critical thinking. So. How do you uh, know it that, okay, now we are applying the necessary amount of, of critical thinking? Mm -hmm. Well, usually it depends. If it's just the two of us talking, it's different than if a whole, it's a corporate meeting, like you have, you have 10 guys working with you, you're, you're running your own company. Uh, there is usually people who can only do critical thinking. Usually the legal department, accounting department uh, will say, no, 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 we can't do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, we can't do that. And, and the, the leader of the group just basically very calm and say, hold on for a second. Right now we're, uh, we're doing creative thinking and, and write down all the creative ideas, mm -hmm. let them flow, let them flow. And then all of a sudden the leader can decide, okay, let's apply critical thinking to it. And then you can write down the legal obstacles, the accounting of the financial obstacles, the location obstacles, the, the overhead problems, whatever, right? And so that's how it can work if you're a practice leader mm -hmm. of a group, right? If it's just the two of us, it's much easier. We can just, we can go and have, have a creative thinking. And then we say, okay, now let's look at finances. Let's look at this. So it's it's much easier. The nothing ever replaces the self, the self knowledge that I am now applying creative thinking, mm -hmm. and or I am now applying critical thinking. So knowing that they're applying critical thinking will really be helpful. If mm -hmm. if, I, if you and me are different mode. Okay, that's into blockchain. I understand. So it's very important to in any corporate meetings to have a certain alignment among the group members to now let's, you know, let's guys now let's be more creative and then we will apply the necessary critical thinking afterwards. Yes. I understand. Yeah, it's it, it's extremely important to do goal settings and regular meetings where the goals are set uh, all together. Mm -hmm. So everyone participates in the goal settings, which you can write down and uh, write down and mm -hmm. write down, uh, etc. And so it's important because if they participate in the goal setting, they will be they will be implementing it with uh, the appropriate enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. um, so once this once the critical and and the creative is in, in balance, it's usually a huge step forward to success. And my, my question related to that is like, we were talking about the critical thinking and we are, we are talking a lot about, you know, our beliefs and also our feelings, which are sometimes blocking us to make the certain actions, which are necessary basically to move towards goals. How can we overcome, if maybe this is not the right word, but maybe you will say uh, the, 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 the by bypassing, how can we overcome this kind of beliefs which are blocking us, these are limitations, which are, uh, you know, limiting our potential. How can we really be, you know, uh, reaching our potential, however we call it? Right. Uh, first of all, being aware that I have, lim I have those limited thoughts, being aware that I have the belief that, uh, Oh my God, I'm, I'm so scared of 
stepping forward to make a step, to make an investment, something like that. Uh, knowing that uh, everyone, in everyone's mind, the, the mind that's currently developed is uh, basically a program slave oriented mind that's been programmed from childhood. And uh, the, uh, basically it, it, it has constraint, constra mm -hmm. constraints. So uh, the constraints are in my head, your head, everyone's head. And if I'm going to look at, okay, I have constraints in my head and you have constraints in your head, let's work within the limitations of our constraints. Uh, our success will be very, very mm -hmm. limited. Mm -hmm. So we got to know how to not analyze the constraints not look at the limitations, not try to fix the limitations. Here's the problem. People, if people are aware of the limits, they try to fix it. So oh, I'm aware that, I, you know, my, when, my, when my grandfather jumped off the horse, you know, uh, my grandmother was picking daisies, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, uh, being aware that I that my sort of, sort of contrast mind, uh, we have a, we have our mind consists of what I call contrast mind, and what I call angular mind, uh, two separate components. The contrast mind works with uh, 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 limitations uh, as far as everything exists in comparison to something else. Okay, and we need that kind of mind. Everything, uh, it's also uh, stored uh, information, storing information, everything uh, relating to everything else. Okay, so being aware of my own mind, uh, we don't want to fix the negative beliefs. Mm -hmm. Just knowing that negative thinking, negative results. Confused thinking, confused results. That's true. Thinking results. Uh, emotions are really, you know, uh, it's it's very simple. If I'm, um, if I have fearful thoughts all the time, I'm going to have fearful results. So, it's important to know that those fearful templates, I call them, cannot be fixed. But here is the good news: they can be bypassed. It's a very important distinction. Knowing this distinction again makes a major difference in your success. So let's say I have a fear, I have fear and I'm aware that the fear is there. I don't want to fix it or say I shouldn't, oh, I shouldn't have fear, oh, I shouldn't have fear. Mm -hmm. That won't work. What will work is to leave the template alone, the fear template alone, and what I call angle into the body, like, like we're doing it already. So please, if you want to participate, <laughs> just uh, smile at your hands or smile at your butt on the chair, or smile on the top of your head. Uh, it's easy to, you'll find it very easy to actually govern or direct a smile to the top of your head. So this is uh, accessing the intelligence of the body that runs the body. Even if we are sick, the intelligence runs the body. So. What we want to do is not fix our negativity because it cannot be fixed. Bypass it, access the intelligence of the body, right? And, and, and as soon as we do it, we, we bring in the intelligence, the knowledge. We're even bringing in non-local information because our conscious mind has only local information, limited programmed information. This way we bring in non-local information and uh, non-local intelligence. So um, your question, to answer your question, uh, to summarize <laughs> the answer to the question, if I'm aware of my, say, negative thinking, uh, I, let it, I let that be okay and I, uh, I take my attention and focus, I call it angling into the body and access this amazing peace that's available there. And that amazing peace will immediately take care of my negative attitude. So I'm able to then continue the conversation with you and 
and my negative attitude will not affect the conversation. As a matter of fact, I was able to bring in non-local intelligence into the planning and into the conversation. Mm -hmm. I think it's very crucial that it's very, um, what you're saying is very simple in a way, but it's a bit of, uh, um, let's say, um, uh, understanding it consciously, it, it takes a little bit of time because it was also in the beginning for me, it was, uh, in the beginning it was like, oh, okay. The simplest thing is really just focusing on our bodies and basically it automatically bypassing basically that fearful thoughts or fearful beliefs. So we don't have to all the time um, jump over the limiting beliefs or changing limiting beliefs. It's more like um, my understanding. It's like a kind of tool that we can use in order to be basically um, going under that limiting belief. So basically what we are doing is bypassing the fear behind that certain limiting belief. So we will be just being with that certain feeling and not uh, want to solve it because it is very typical that we would like to solve yeah. certain limiting belief or, you know, yeah. uh, just talk about it. It's more like really when we are more in, in our bodies, it's much more easy to basically allow to that feeling yeah. to be there and not really, you know, uh, focusing on that. Yeah, 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 exactly. It is amazing how much uh, accessing this intelligence in a business conversation or any kind of conversation, it's amazing what, what can happen. It takes a little bit of uh, practice, but all of a sudden you'll find that your contrast mind, your, which is your, your capacity, your skills, etc., uh, uh, start to work better. Mm -hmm. Your negotiations start to work better. And uh, when we are capable of being with one idea without thinking, just bringing this intelligence in and be with it. Okay, so uh, moonshake cut that friend. Okay, oops. And we're being with the mm -hmm. craziest idea, not thinking. By not thinking, we're allowing, we're opening the door for the universe to bring in all kinds of connections, ideas, stuff like that. Uh, these are not normally taught in, in, taught in business schools, but uh, uh, knowing this, doing this again, it's a major, major step forward. So we need to learn how to think clearly and properly. Obviously, we have scattered thinking, we have scattered results. So we need to learn how to think. And how we learn how to think is first, we must learn how not to think. And also, it's, I think, very important. And one of the issues I, I see is that um, we don't have many times clarity on what we truly want. And this is, most cases, is like all of this thinking and thoughts mm -hmm. and emotions and since we have lots of influence in our lives as you said uh, in this um, kind of in this kind of where we have lots of impulses coming in which is enforcing or strengthening our limitations and not That's helping right. us and uh, you, you you told me that um, back in the day when we were basically searching for for answers when you had um, all of these difficulties in your life in your business you were going to different tribes and it was a very interesting story for me when you shared it with me that um, when you were there you were just seeing people just doing their thing not really thinking about it yes can you share more about your experiences back then which is you know connected to what we are talking about today yeah absolutely at, at, at one time um, i i was close to immediately after a great failure in business, I removed myself and I lived in a lived in a forest for seven years. And I was searching for something, happiness, whatever we call it. And of course, uh, the more I searched for it, the further, further I got from it. But nevertheless, I kept searching. <laughs> One of my searches took me to uh, Ecuador. I had a friend of mine who owned a motel near the jungle and uh, uh, I went down with him 
and he introduced me to this the shaman to a shaman in the tribe and i've always had these childhood dreams and fantasies about indians and uh, tribes and shamans and i've seen these people uh, you know hooking your chest up to something and spinning you around and and between my male ego and curiosity, I was <laughs> very interested in what they do. And I asked if I could uh, hang out with them. And the shaman says yes. So um, I, uh, I was able to hang out with them for three and a half months. Um, <laughs> and it was a major learning experience for me because uh, people woke up in the morning and they were just sitting. And uh, by that time, I had a lot of meditative and spiritual experience. I knew how to meditate, how to calm my mind, things like that. But I was amazed these people came out. Uh, I also came out, get up in the morning. Of course, I was still scratching myself from the bugs and stuff like that. I was not used to it. And they were just sitting and smiling, and I was waiting for something to happen. They were able to just be, and I was not. And um, the ability just to be brings in untold happiness, wealth, riches to our life. Now, the problem with that is that the normal mind which we operate from, the contrast mind, the programmed mind, totally underestimates it. Matter of fact, it discounts it. It cannot value silence. It cannot measure silence. It totally underestimates it. It wants you and me to uh, think and work within the constraints of itself. It's hurrying us. It always wants Hurry us to, yeah. uh, you know, to take action and not just really That's sit right. down to really, you know, That's right. think about yeah. And and the huge problem that it is reinforced by society as a whole. We talk to parents; they reinforce the uh, constraint thinking. Oh, don't try this. Don't do this. We talk to the neighbors. Same thing. We talk to a bank. We talk to the institutions. We talk to anyone. The this. Uh, constraint thinking is totally reinforced whereby the, the the belief is there is that the best we can hope for as people is a looser chain okay so we all we all chained up we're all slaves let's get a looser chain oh, i had a lot of money but the chain was still not loose <laughs> you, you felt the same stress you felt yeah. the overwhelm you felt the fears and stuff like that right so because, uh, because uh, society as a whole does not value this, it's absolutely essential to learn about this, not talk about it, and just simply um, learn to access the intelligence of the body, live with it, activate it, use it. It's an inherited right that all people have. It's uh, not popular, and the, the whole idea has been really screwed up by religions and many spiritual organizations, but it is your inherited right. It works really well, and it's very simple. It could be learned. <laughs> and uh, disregard the opinions around you. That's one of the key to success, especially at the beginning. Uh, do not talk about your success planning very much <laughs> and one question back to you when you were at the village with these people is yeah. like uh, i'm very curious because um, my thought about this is, is so crucial to combine the being part and also using our let's say western mind to right. really create success and and be more you know because many people start let's say their business uh, you know to be free in some ways yeah so right. as you started so, it as like, well like me yes yeah. and many people are so you know scared when they are reaching a certain level of success because they they have 
they started basically, you know, from a certain place of fear and not basically not uh, not from a place of love or, or 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 alignment or being. And I'm very curious, like what you experience at that small village when where people are just you know coming out from their homes, you know, and, and just you know they just went on being mode and just they were just being there. What you experience there, it's like. Well, uh, I I knew that that is what I was looking for mm -hmm. all my life. I wanted to be wealthy, to be happy, but the kind of happiness I was looking for is that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was the first time I saw ordinary people. They couldn't even read and write. Uh, be just being and looking at them i knew that that's the kind of happiness i was looking for i did not know how to get it how to borrow it i i couldn't buy it if i could buy it i could have bought an exclusive right for it and have exclusive distribution in the west coast of the united states or something it would have sold like hot <laughs> uh, so it's it's a it's a realization that that's what i'm looking for this kind of peace does not mean that now we're going to leave success alone or you you leave you leave alone financial success or any kind of advancement it's a it's a it's a mistake to think that it's either success or inner peace mm -hmm. okay? that's so crucial that's so crucial it's a it's a myth it's something that's again propagated or whatever the word is by um, by institutionally approved uh, 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 slavery. No, no, don't go there. That doesn't belong. On the contrary, uh, accessing this inner peace and using it for business, you take your level of competence from this level to that level. So it's like uh, it's like if you would you would be running your business looking out from the first floor of a building. At a war, at a war or something, makes a difference if you can now go to the twenty-fifth floor. Mm -hmm. So you have a much wider view. You can see the battlefield. You can see what you can see what's happening. You can make uh, calm, intelligent decisions which really stick. So the the application of this inner peace and the application of your uh, education, your skills. Uh, your ability to make distinctions, etc., etc. When, when, when this level of consciousness and this uh, being, I'm showing it like this because it's being is in an angle to this mm -hmm. normal level of consciousness. When the two uh, form a union, and you can work with them like this, we're talking about super duper success. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the kind of success that. Uh, say oh my god i go i gotta work harder i, I gotta work harder and i'm gonna have better time management and uh, and hopefully i get a raise <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in in 25 years i pay for my house my children get educated oh boy i'm successful i'm not talking about that kind of success i'm i'm talking about bill gates success when when you when you let the two work in harmony man it's amazing and you can have the happiness and you can have the relationship mm. and the wealth all at the same time i think it's very crucial that um, many of us and including myself before i i imagine that when you are you know and when i when i will be successful when i will be wealthy i will be super happy and whenever i had lots of success for a certain amount of time maybe for one day two weeks one month i really felt this kind of wow happiness but after a while, it became like a, a numb feeling like, okay, I'm happy for two seconds because I achieved that, I'm very happy. And then, okay, what's next? And what I experienced with you, with you and, and then your teachings is that I get to the certain level of, of a constant happiness without a certain fear. Because whenever I'm experiencing this experience in the past, this kind of successes, I felt a certain fear that maybe I will lose it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it wasn't coming from a place of kind of abundance or coming from a, this place of being. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so mm -hmm. crucial that um, many of us believing 
this might is like you cannot be you know happy or you can be only happy when you are successful or, or wealthy and i think it's so nice that what you said is like when you are really being then you are really just you know enjoying being and then creating from that even a business or even whatever you want even a relationship or being with a meeting with people the the results is just you know really easily appearing that's so. right that's right yeah there is a <laughs> there is a this this thought about i'm gonna be happy when yeah uh, and i'm gonna be happy when which is I had uh, subscribed to that uh, philosophy for many years and I was one of those I worked very hard and, and all that stuff and I had better time management better hiring policies uh, better lawyers better accountants on and on and on and it was some very nice success but uh, temporary happiness is a pro if a project worked I was happy I bought a new Mercedes for a while I was happy right but it all took very hard work and it was temporary and there is a way to make all this permanent mm. and I I instead of saying okay when I reach that I'll be happy uh, first we go to a place of happy first we go to a place of no need if you're uh, feeling the chair you might feel a little bit of uh, like a refined calm feeling it's no big deal it's not like anything mysterious but uh, this is the place of no need so this is the feeling uh, where you if you come from that no need your success is just about assured permanent success um, so at uh, frequently during your projects during our projects of the hot dog stand of course <laughs> We have, on, yeah. during conversations during whatever we gotta we gotta go on no in no need we do our work of course you use your rational you use everything that you learned about hot dog stands or hot dog manufacturing by the way to uh, open a hot dog stand is much harder than buying a whole hot dog factory but anyway that's an <laughs> <laughs> it's a different story <laughs> so it's it's crucial to start from no need and it's not this this is not very well known or not not much talked about and the way to go to the no need is to just to go to the intelligence of the body uh, some people call it god some people call it universe so get rid of the need and then start working on your dreams uh, that means if you have no need everything will come to you easily effortlessly uh, like magic but, um, it works very well if you want to have a partner or want to have a successful business as soon as we come from need now we are into the duality end of things that means success not success make money lose money stuff like that and so there is a place uh, there's a level of place where we can come from of absolutely no need yes i succeed and i am happy i that one is not a success i'm happy i have a great big house i'm happy i have a bigger house i'm happy i have a small house i'm happy mm. i made a huge party in the weekend it was a success i'm happy i made a huge party hardly anybody showed up i'm happy <laughs> <laughs> it was a facebook live who okay. cares? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So the to come from the no need again is one of those big, big, big mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. It's as big as the uh, the critic, the critical thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people who come from no need reach large, large, large success. I've met many extremely wealthy people. I mean, are talking real wealth and they were kind of born into it and they never came from any need so everything just comes to them and multiplies you know the the you know the concept the rich gets richer the poor gets poorer it's it's absolutely true mm -hmm. but it's not the money it's the known being able to be in no need and even if you don't have any money it's possible to go to the place of no need mm. and work from there 
is being part of you the being part yes yeah and I will just ask the audience if they have any questions and we will see if they have one. But meanwhile, let's just make a summary, I think, because it was a very, um, for me as well, since I'm hearing it from you uh, multiple times in, in, in the past years. Um, so my summary, and please, like, please, you know, give, give your thought as well, uh, to it as well, is like how important it is to be really before we are going to a meeting or before having an important negotiation, before you know meeting someone or before we are starting working on our projects, it's taking a little time, even just a couple of minutes and doing the exercise what we are doing. So let's do the exercise again together. Yeah. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right now, you mean? Yeah, 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 no, okay. yeah sure. So right now, the easiest, just remember first, because this is easy, is your inherited right and the mind is trying to block it. So the way we unblock the path to it is chuckle. <laughs> so we can <laughs> say hello. Instead of say hello, you say <laughs> hello, chuckle. <laughs> and uh, the mind says, yeah, you look like an idiot, things like that. So it doesn't it's matter. Satisfied. It doesn't matter. Right? I've been called worse. So. so first we chuckle. And then very nicely, easily, we just be aware of the feeling in our hand. And smile at the hand. And you might immediately feel, it's a feeling, that the mind kind of calms down or stops. And this is the place of uh, universal intelligence. It is the place of no need. We go a little bit beyond the mind, beyond duality here. It's an, an exceptional platform for success also an exceptional platform for relating to people you mentioned going into a meeting yeah i mean you know you know how in a meeting in a negotiation in a sale you're looking for commonality right you're looking for commonality with the person so the person will hear what you have to say right your product uh, development or what have you right so it's important for the person to have something in common right and you might find the subject. Oh, you're into horses. I'm into horses. Okay. You know, you go to church. I go to church. Okay. You, <laughs> whatever. Much more easy. Much more yeah. easy. Now, uh, there is one commonality between people is this, uh, is this uh, bodily, godlike intelligence that everyone has. You can find something in common, but in addition to it, if you can be in a no-need place, and you can learn to actually talk from it like I do now. A amazing what happens. The influence on the people multiply hundredfolds. Mm. You become likable, lovable, and uh, you would not dare to present a product that is not good for them. And they would feel it in their, in their mm. heart, in their mm. essence. So uh, this no need place, you can call it love, whatever we call it. It's a, it's like, it's permanent, it's a permanent success place. Mm -hmm. uh, because you feel successful, you feel that it's enough, you feel no need before you even started. Mm -hmm. And there's no other way to actually present something in a group mm -hmm. than, than a no need. Mm -hmm. I, I have no need, but by the way, here is this product that is going to benefit you greatly. And you, they can sense that you're not in need. Yes, I think it's so crucial to see that many of um, many of us are coming from sometimes from a scarcity, like yeah, I need that one, I need that money, or, or I need the approval from others, or I need, I need, I need, I need. And by just really being more in our bodies and looking inside, however we call it, and having this just little smile on 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 our face, not just faking smile, it's more like smiling on on our you know bodies mm -hmm. and even body parts and uh and just really even chuckling and just like you know smiling and just be you know uh, breaking the pattern of of the mind and making exactly. the pattern of yeah, the limitation yeah. in our head just exactly. like chuckling is the most easiest way i experienced from from Gabo. absolutely and and by this we just can be much more uh, be being in the moment, enjoying the moment, enjoying the negotiation, enjoying the sales, enjoying the work itself. Right. And we just can bypass the resistance 
bypass the stress, bypass the frustration or even overwhelm when we are working and just like being in our bodies and just really enjoying our time together with other people as well. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's a, it, it's, it's amazing possibility to be young and to know that, to apply this mm -hmm. and be ambitious. Yes. And I'm not talking mini ambition here, believe me. This is, this is mm -hmm. easier to be a king. Really, it's like learning how to be royal. Mm. It's like work by declarations and let the success unfold and come to you much easier than working hard. Yes. <laughs> okay, from a, come from me, yes. It's not, uh, I experience when um, uh, these days and I'm really just really taking the time because it seems like very easy, but that's why it seems easy. Sometimes we just forget to do that. So this is my pattern in some ways. I'm just forgetting how easy it is to be just, you know, go into our body, just smile on myself, feel myself. Even before, like, uh, I went today in the gym and, yeah, I I felt a bit uh, tired in the morning. But if I would have done this easy exercise, which takes basically 20 seconds, yeah. then it just totally, my focus yeah. is on, on my body more. I enjoy my body more. I can, you know, uh, bring more weights up, uh, push right. up more weights. But it's also if if you are uh, in business or you are working with people, you are, you know, a people manager. I think it's very crucial to um, being more and then <clears throat> taking action from that place because action is also necessary, but not that uh, absolutely, absolutely. But the place you come from, taking yes. action is the most powerful yes. place that way and uh, by the way when we chuckle we're not looking for happiness yeah chuckling to be happy no, no. we're looking for a physiology of happiness oh yeah <laughs> that's different than being happy yeah because we, i don't um, have to be happy to chuckle and and have the physiology of happy yeah right and the mind would like to say oh this is not real you should be really happy no it's uh, i have the right to access my inherited right for the physiology of happiness, mm. which gets me to great success. Yeah, it's basically we're just changing our physiology, changing our focus to more going into the, into our bodies, and we just get into a place of, um, as I experience, a bigger calmness. But not the goal is not the calmness, because this is just like a side effect, a very little side effect of it. It's more like the focus and 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 the, the being part, which is our yeah. our aim to be. Um, being conscious about our bodies and, and and just breaking the pattern of the mind and breaking the pattern of overwhelm, stress, anxiety, and we can yeah. just frustration. Yeah. Breaking the pattern. It, it it's a it's a place to come from. Yeah. We're looking for a a platform yeah. of reality to come from as a permanent place. I, I, there, I, there's no limits there. I remember yeah. like uh, whenever some of you maybe were playing video games in the past. I'm still playing, by the way. Uh, good, good, stuff. <laughs> good stuff. Uh, and, <clears throat> and there was some, you know, cheat codes back in the day when you were like, uh, I remember in Doom there was NPCR yeah. or something, whatever. And um, when we were just pushing these different buttons and combinations, we got, got to be this kind of God mode. Mm -hmm, the God, God mode. mode. Mm -hmm. Now this is a very similar thing, just in real life, and uh, really it's it's more you have better ideas, you are have much more clarity what you want, you are much more you know creative, um, and also you know enjoying more joy, more more fun in your life, and and life becomes really like a playground where you can really play, play for right. money, of course, for success and. Money, success will st still be, of course, important because we are in ambitious. It's not about, you know, leaving out ambition. It's just basically um, getting to your uh, getting to your ambition becomes much more easier, much more effortless, much more. Even though you will work as much as before, but you will come from a no need place, so you will enjoy more That's the right. working. You have more energy. You have more passion. You have more, you know, joy yeah. in your life. You know, what's interesting is you mentioned passion and energy and all this. And a good friend of mine just joined us, Jason Barbex, who is a very oh, successful Jason. actor. Oh. <laughs> so uh, while talking about playful, he, he 
<laughs> really, he's, he's really playful. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, absolutely. It's uh, um, it's the most efficient something that you can allocate your attention to that gives you great results. Mm -hmm. It's extremely high leverage. Yes, I think everyone knows what the word means, right? Yes. So we want to put in a little bit of effort and get a uh, big result. Yes. Not the other way around. Yes, because we, and just going back to the original belief, um, and then we will, you know, finish off today's meeting. If you have any questions, just please, you know, drop in the comments and we will answer them. Um, it's really not about changing beliefs. It's not about, um, um, you know, uh, shifting uh, thoughts. It's more about going beyond this kind of thoughts and, and beliefs and coming from a different place where you are not coming from a kind of fear, not coming from, because every limitation has some kind, some kind of fear behind it. You're not coming from that place. Therefore, stress, anxiety, and overwhelm can be just really easily bypassed. And you are basically running on, on a God mode, uh, God mode, like uh, a way, a new platform, as you said. So yeah. it's, I think it's wonderful how you, you put it. Yeah, exactly. So if you have no questions, let's let's now do the last exercise. Let's just do again. <laughs> With again? Do it. Yeah, okay. sure. And then we can close it off. Okay. Well, it's uh, we call it an, uh, Gabor calls it an exercise, and it's okay to call it uh, whatever we want, because no matter what we call it, it's not it. <laughs> so I, I can call it rusty nail, or I don't know, a pink elephant, or whatever. It doesn't matter what. As soon as we call it exercise, it's fine. You know, it's a, it, it's such a natural thing that we don't even, there's no beginning, no end. So all we have to do is chuckle and smile at your hand, a very nonchalant, very by the way, as if it was perfectly natural and because it is. And the feel, the peace that you feel is your inherited right. Don't have to deserve it. Don't have to work for it. Don't have to modify your behavior for it. It's not only for successful people. <laughs> Smile at your hand. It's not only for poor people. <laughs> you don't have to be poor. You can have wealth and peace. And this is the peace that beyond understanding. Just feel your hand and feel the chair. Smile at the chair. And if you feel the peace, you know in your heart whether or not this is for you. This is the beginning of a path, beginning of a kind of learning which takes you with hardly any effort everywhere. So adding this dimension to our life, this peaceful dimension, you, you might see my mouth moving weirdly. I'm just simply uh, shifting the uh, the vector of the attention inside my body, which is the direction and the intensity. <laughs> and uh, if you feel this peace, the door is open so that the universe can help. The mind says, oh, this is crazy, nothing is happening. It's not true. Absolutely not true. The mind that we use cannot value this or measure this. Therefore, it devalues it totally. Please don't pay attention to your royal self. Pay attention to your programmed slavery kind of self because that's where I can thrive the most. So you can tell the mind, you know. <laughs> we don't take anything seriously. Feel your hand. And when we're doing this together, it's even easier. It's a platform of reality where we start out with happiness. We start out with success. We start out with satisfaction. And then the rest becomes by the way. So 
So it's very nice to hang out with you guys. Thank you, Gabor. Thank you for coming. And thank you guys for being here with us. Um, and and if you have any questions, just really go by at Gabor's um, website. I put it into the Facebook Live thread. So just read it. And um, we wish you a beautiful evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are from all over the world. So enjoy your time and we say goodbye to you guys. And thanks, Gabor, again for coming. Bye, guys. Keep bye on bye. keep on chuckling. <laughs> bye, guys. <laughs> ciao, ciao.